what's up you guys welcome back to the tiny herd today we are going to be talking all about guinea pig fleece and how to use it correctly for your pets it's Allison today we are talking all about guinea pig fleece and how to use it properly for your pets so fleece for guinea pigs has become really popular over the past five years um, I got my three female guinea pigs in 2015 and that is really when I first heard about fleece for guinea pigs so that is really when it was first getting started I think first getting started being a really popular option so over the past five years, it has kind of exploded and become a really popular option. However, fleece is not the best option for every guinea pig owner. So we're gonna be going over how fleece bedding works, how to use fleece bedding properly, and then the pros and cons of using fleece bedding so that you can decide for yourself whether it is the right choice for you and your pets. Before we get too far into this video, I do wanna mention, if you are new to my channel, I make new pet related videos every Friday, so hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications if you don't want to miss an upload. So first up, let's talk about how fleece bedding actually works. Fleece bedding works for guinea pigs by allowing liquid to pass through the fleece layer so that the guinea pig is not walking on wet bedding all the time. People call this getting the fleece to wick because it's wicking the liquid down off of the surface. This means that there are some steps that you need to take to use fleece bedding properly. So because this liquid is supposed to pass through the fleece layer, you might be wondering where the liquid is supposed to go. So to use fleece bedding, you actually need two layers at minimum. This is honestly where I've seen some people go wrong with using fleece. I've seen some people, you know, doing cage cleans that only have a fleece layer down in their cage, which fleece bedding can be great, but you have to use it properly for it to be a safe and healthy option for your pets. So, like I said, there needs to be two layers. There needs to be the fleece layer that is on top that allows, you know, the liquid to pass through. And then there needs to be some kind of absorbent layer under there to actually absorb the liquid and keep it, you know, under the surface away from your pet. So that first layer is fleece that you have wicking properly because there is a process to getting fleece to wick, which we'll talk about later on. The second layer goes under the fleece and this layer needs to be absorbent because it is what is going to be soaking up the liquid and keeping it off the surface away from your pet. So there are a ton of different options you can use for the absorbent layer. You can just put towels down, you can use puppy pads, you could use a mattress pad, um, and you can use U-Haul pads, which are the U-Haul furniture pads. I don't know who figured out that those are super absorbent, but they are and they work really great. So there are a lot of different options that you can use for your absorbent layer. So the main thing that you need to know about fleece to use it properly is that there needs to be two layers. There needs to be a fleece layer, there needs to be an absorbent layer, okay? We got that. <laughs> so now let's talk about how to use fleece bedding properly. Now that we understand how it works, we can discuss how you should actually be using it. So I kind of touched on before that something that I see sometimes on YouTube videos or cage cleaning is that every time I start filming, somebody has to start drinking super loud. Hopefully that's not too annoying. So first, to use guinea pig fleece properly, you do need to have both of those layers. You need to have that absorbent layer under your fleece so the liquid has somewhere to go. I've seen cages where they have a nice layer of fleece, but they don't put anything underneath it and they're not using a cage liner, so there's really nowhere for the liquid to go. That's not gonna keep your pet dry or healthy. So you really do need that absorbent layer that's kind of part of how fleece works properly and it really needs to be there to use fleece properly. Next, your fleece does need to be properly prepared. So I kind of mentioned this before when I said that people say fleece needs to wick. This means it needs to pull that liquid through the fleece layer to the absorbent layer. A lot of times when you buy fleece just from the fabric store or wherever you're getting your fleece from, it doesn't do that. It has a chemical coating or some kind of barrier on it that keeps liquid from just going through. So you really need to prepare it correctly in order for it to have those wicking properties. And those wicking properties are important because that's how fleece works. You want it to pull the liquid underneath so your pet is not sitting in wet spots. 
So how do you take your fleece through this wicking process? Essentially, you want to run it through the washing machine three or four times on hot water. Hot water, okay? If you use cold water, you're just going to keep washing it and keep washing it and keep washing it and it's never going to get wicking properties, at least in my experience. I usually run mine through the washing machine three or four times on the hottest setting. Um, I don't usually use soap. Uh, I'll use soap the first time, but the second, third, fourth time, um, however long it takes, I don't use soap because it's not, you know, I'm not trying to clean it. I'm trying to get it through this wicking process. So run it through the washing machine a couple of times and then test it to see if it is working properly and wicking liquid through. And the way that you do this is you just take the fleece, pour a little bit of liquid on it and see how quickly the liquid soaks in. You'll be able to tell very quickly when it's not ready versus when it is ready because when it's not ready, the liquid is going to just sit on top. It may eventually soak through, but you will very obviously see that it's sitting on top of the fleece. When it is ready, it's prepared and it's wicking properly, you'll see it, you'll pour the liquid on and it will soak right in. And it's really, it looks like it's soaking in, but really with that absorbent layer underneath, it's gonna go through into the absorbent layer. So you want that to be soaking through within, you know, three to five seconds. You don't want the option for your pet to pee in their cage and it take, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes to soak in because that's just going to make your pet wet and dirty. So that is really the whole process on getting your fleece to wick properly. If you order cage liners online, check the details of the store that you're buying from. Some of them prepare their fleece ahead of time before they, you know, ship it out to you. And some of them do not. So you want to check that to make sure that your liners are ready to be put in your cages when you get them or whether they need to be put through the wicking process. And a lot of the shops that don't do the wicking process themselves do offer instructions on how to do that. The most important thing to know when using fleece, use it properly. And this is the reason why using fleece is not the right choice for everyone is that you have to spot clean your cages every day. If you do not spot clean your cages, they can become very wet and unhealthy and dirty very quickly. So you really have to be willing to put in maintenance and spot clean your cages every single day if you are going to be using fleece bedding. You can also go through your cages when you spot clean and have smaller pads to replace in areas where your pet likes to lay a lot, where they go to the bathroom a lot. So I will put in some clips of when I spot clean my cages and you can see I have smaller pads under water bottles, underneath Heidi's that they're in a lot, underneath hay where they spend a lot of time. And I put smaller pads there so that I only have to change my actual fleece liners once a week, but I change out those smaller pads every other day, every day, however often they need to be changed because as soon as they start getting wet, they really need to come out of there. They're just gonna be you know, wet and unhealthy for your pet and your cage is gonna start to smell. So this is also really a tip on if you're having issues with your fleece bedding and your cage is smelling, try using some smaller pads in high traffic areas. Make sure that you have that absorbent layer underneath and make sure that you're spot cleaning your cages on a regular basis. So really quickly, I do wanna run through my laundry routine with fleece because this is part of using fleece bedding and it's part of using fleece bedding properly. So when I clean my cages, and I will put clips in here for you guys so that you can see what I'm talking about, but when I clean my cages, I take out all of the stuff in their cage, I take out the smaller pads, and I make sure that before I put all my fleece ready for the washing machine, I get all of the hay off of it, I sweep it off, um, I make sure that there's nothing that's going to, you know, get stuck or ruin my washing machine. And then all of it, I just wash together. I do, you know, one load of guinea pig fleece all together so that it's separate from, you know, all my other laundry. So I put all of my fleece in the washing machine. I put it on a regular cycle. We wash it on hot water because that's going to get it the most clean. And I like to wash it on hot water because that just helps me feel like that wicking property is not going to go away. It'll just, you know, keep it going because that's how you get that wicking property in the first place. So wash your fleece separately from all your other laundry, 
put it in on the regular cycle or you could do heavy duty if you wanted as well if it's really dirty and then wash it on hot water so that is really what i do to wash my fleece and make sure that you are using a free and clear or unscented laundry detergent guinea pigs have very sensitive respiratory systems they have sensitive noses you don't want to be using any like heavily scented any you know fragrance in your laundry detergent we use multiple different kinds of free and clear um or if you have some kind of unscented free and clear option that you can get your hands on you definitely want to be using that it works just fine to clean the fleece i haven't had any issues we just use the regular laundry detergent works great gets it clean and i don't have to worry about any smells or anything bothering my pets i do want to mention also that if you are having trouble getting your liners clean adding some white vinegar to the load can help get odors out and it'll help get them that little bit extra clean so you can try that as well if you feel like laundry detergent's not getting your fleece as clean as you want it to be so that's just a tip that i have tried and i know a lot of other people do with their guinea pig laundry as well so you can try that for yourself once my fleece is all clean and you know needs to come out of the washing machine I usually either hang it up to dry if I have time to do that or we will put it in the dryer on like no heat like low heat no heat whatever the lowest setting is um, and we just run it through the dryer multiple times to get it dry and the reason I do that I know some people disagree and some people don't have this experience but with the fleece that I use if I put it in the dryer with any heat it immediately removes the wicking properties so i just don't dry my fleece with any heat so that i don't risk taking the wicking properties out if you don't have that experience put them in the dryer all you want but my opinion and my experience has been i want my fleece to last as long as possible putting it in the dryer andy's chewing on my dry bond <laughs> andy what's he doing Anyways, my experience has been if I put it in any kind of heat in the dryer, it removes the wicking properties and it also can shrink. Mikey, what are you doing? Hey, stop it. Okay, well now that Mikey has chucked my camera onto the floor, he's gonna do it again. Are you gonna do it again? What are you doing? Mikey literally just tried to chuck my camera on the floor twice, grabbing the bottom of the dry pot. <laughs> okay, what I was trying to say, I don't put my fleece on any type of heat setting in the dryer because I think it shrinks my fleece, removes the wicking properties, and makes my fleece not last as long. That's just my experience and my opinion. If you put yours in the dryer and it works fine, put it in the dryer. It really doesn't matter as long as you keep the wicking property that you need for your fleece to work properly. That is my entire laundry process. Sorry, there's still a bunny chewing on my laptop. That is the entire process for washing my fleece. Um, I can do an entire video on that if you guys want to see it. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. But that's kind of just the overview of my laundry process. Hopefully we don't have any more bunny interruptions <laughs> through the rest of this video. So now that we've talked about how fleece bedding works and how to use it properly, let's go over some pros and cons of fleece bedding so that you can decide if it is the right option for your lifestyle and your pets. First up, we're going to cover the cons of fleece bedding. So the thing that a lot of people talk about, and this definitely is a con, is that fleece bedding can be pretty expensive up front, especially if you are using actual liners. Liners tend to be around $100 at least, um, depending on what size your cage is. A lot of them can be ordered custom to what fleece you want, and the price kind of can just go up from there. So it can be a pretty expensive investment, in the beginning so that is something that a lot of people are unsure about whether they want to use fleece bedding because it is a lot of money to shell out up front like i mentioned before you do have to spot clean your cages every single day and this to me is the biggest con and the biggest thing that you should take into account when considering if you want to use fleece in your own cages because if you have a really busy lifestyle you are gone the entire day until you get home at nine o'clock at night if you have a lot of activities after school if you are in college or you i don't know work 
um, whatever it may be, whatever your situation, if you know that you are not going to want to come home every day and spot clean your cages or get up early to spot clean your cages, then you probably don't want to be using fleece. It really will be very unhealthy and very dirty and very smelly very quickly if you do not spot clean every day. And I know a lot of people think that, oh, I'll just, you know, spot clean every other day or whatever, but really like there's been days that I skip spot cleaning and I am so mad at myself the next day because it's such a pain in the butt because guinea pigs make such a big mess so fast. So really, really think about this when you're considering if you want to use fleece because this is really the kind of make or break it thing um, when it comes to upkeeping fleece. You have to spot clean every day. So this can kind of depend based on your situation, but adding fleece laundry into your laundry routine can add to your water bill. And if you have to buy a separate laundry detergent, you know, buying free and clear laundry detergent, that can add up as well. So that's something to be aware of. For our situation, for example, this doesn't really have a huge impact because we don't use that much water anyways. So it really doesn't push us above the next threshold for our water bill, but it really depends on where you live. It depends on how you, you are billed for water. It depends on a lot of different things. So just be aware of that, that that could be a potential issue that if you, especially I have six guinea pigs, I have three cages. So three cages worth of fleece once a week every single week that can add up if you are adding a lot of laundry to your water bill so keep that in mind as well now for the pros so i will just say that i love fleece bedding and these are the things that i think are great about it i'm sure there are other things as well but these are really the things that i like the most about it first off it is reusable so I said in the con section that it is very expensive up front or it can be very expensive up front but it is reusable so I'm not buying fleece every single week to fill my cages so I'm you know reusing it putting it in the washing machine I'm not constantly rebuying fleece and if you can use a sewing machine you can make your own liners you don't even have to use liners. You could just go to Joanne or go to Walmart and buy a couple yards of fleece and then have some old towels in the bottom of your cage. So it doesn't have to be expensive. Liners can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be expensive if you don't want it to be. Again, you're also not rebuying it all the time. If I tried to fill up this cage that you could only see half of, by the way, uh, with Carefresh or something like that, it, I know for a fact, would take three full bags of Carefresh bedding, which is about $60. <laughs> so filling that cage up two times would be the cost of one cage liner that I can use for years. I have cage liners that I made when I first got the girls that are five years old. So just keep that in mind that it is kind of a, you know, cost balance there that yes it is expensive up front but you're not constantly rebuying it like you would be other bedding options i personally also think that cleaning cages is a lot easier with fleece bedding i spot clean every day and i use smaller pads in high traffic areas like i mentioned so when i do actually need to change out the liners it's really not that big of a deal because the cages aren't really that dirty i just you know fold them up brush them off wash them and replace the liner in the cage so I it takes me an hour total to clean this entire room with eight pets in here so I just think it's a lot easier and it can be a lot easier than you know scooping up bedding out of a cage and all of that so that's really just personal preference for you if you think it's easier to not use fleece then it's easier for you to not use fleece but for me I just think it's a lot faster to keep cages clean and smell free when I can change out smaller pads and spot clean and that sort of thing. And then finally, this is the reason why a lot of people want to use fleece is it's cute. You can pick whatever fleece pattern you want. You can get liners that are different patterns on either side. You can do themes. Um, there's a lot of different options and you can make your cages whatever you want them to be. So that is a pro as well that a lot of people like, especially when you know your guinea pig is a part of your family if you keep your guinea pigs in the living room if you keep them in your bedroom you can use fleece as a way to kind of help them fit into the decor and honestly sometimes not make as much mess if you have your guinea pig on carefresh in your living room and it kicks carefresh everywhere it can't do that with fleece so 
that's just something to keep in mind it can be cute it can help the cage look a little nicer if you have it in a high traffic area of your house so overall fleece bedding is a great option for guinea pigs if you are willing to do the daily maintenance and the laundry required today we talked about how fleece bedding works how to use it properly and the pros and cons so i hope all of this has helped you decide if fleece bedding is useful i hope it helped you understand the process of how to get fleece bedding to work correctly, how to use it correctly in your own cages, and how to upkeep it through laundry and cleaning and that sort of thing. So make sure you like this video if you did enjoy and found it helpful. If you are new, subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I put up new pet related videos every Friday. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments about fleece bedding, please leave them down below in the comment section and I will try to answer them as much as I can. Any relevant videos or links will be down in the description box. And thank you guys again so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.